Well, this is Pastor Teresa Barrington at the First Christian Church in Windsor, Colorado. And uh, my message today is called Rock, and, Rock versus Sand. Uh, you know, uh, Jesus said a lot of different things when he was on the earth. And, and we have some of the words that he said here in the scripture. And over the last 2,000 plus years, we've been delving into uh, this word. But do you know that this isn't all that Jesus said or did? It isn't. If you look in the book of John, in the very last chapter, it says this, because Jesus did, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. So I, Jesus said and did so many things. He was, uh, I think some of them weren't written in here because he's a personal savior. He, he did come for the whole world, but he also came just for you. And he came just for me. And so there were things that couldn't be written uh, for all of us to see. But um, usually when someone is new to the faith, someone who's more seasoned will tell them, start with the book of John. Start reading the book of John because there's, it's, it's just a really good synopsis of why Jesus came, what he did, and, and what his going forward plan was going to be as well. So it's a really good really good book of the Bible to start with. There's also another book uh, very similar to John, not exactly the same. It's called Matthew, and it's the very first book in the New Testament. If you'll turn there with me, I, I need you to be looking at uh, chapter 7. And uh, um, this also records some of the things that Jesus said, of course, from Matthew's perspective. Each of the Gospels is written according to the perspective of the person who wrote it, right? This was his take on Jesus. And so you might see some differences sometimes in the gospel. It doesn't mean they're inaccurate. I mean, we'd almost think they were inaccurate if they were exactly the same, because then we think, oh, it's just a copy. It's not, um, you know, unique. And so um, let's turn to Matthew uh, 7, and, and we're going to just pop in kind of to the middle of a, of a talk that Jesus was giving to, uh, to some people that he dearly loved. So in uh, verse, or chapter 7, I'm actually going to start with his conclusion. Uh, always in the Bible when it says, therefore, it means think about everything that we've just said and now think about this. Therefore, all of, all of what I'm about to say is based on what I just said. So starting in verse uh, 24, here's what he says. Um, he says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet, it did not fall because, very important, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man. A foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house. And but what happened? And it fell with a mighty crash. I love how Jesus takes something normal and then he puts something spiritual on it. A deep spiritual truth. You know that song, the children's song, The wise man built his house upon the rock. Remember that one? Well, that's a good word. These are good words to tell to our children uh, and, and to ask the question of ourselves. Which, which one of those am I? Am I like the wise man or am I like the foolish man? On what is your life built? If you're wise, you'll want to build on a solid rock, right? And that's true both in the physical and in the spiritual realms, right? I'm not an architect. I don't know how many of you are, but it just stands to reason that if we build on a, a, a rock or we build on sand, then it's going to start to shift, right? It's going to crack. Your walls are going to start to crack. Then it'll crumble and it'll crash. But if you build on a rock, rocks are, are sturdy. They're strong. They're stable. And they stand firm. Now that's how it is in the physical world, and it's just the same in the spiritual world. You have uh, probably now, right now, in all of history, more choices of materials uh, on which to build your house, also known as your life, when we're talking spiritually, 
you can build it on fame or money or a political stance or an ideology. You could build it on a person. You could build it on a pleasure. Or you could even just build it on your own self. All of those things are spiritual sand. The only thing that's solid in the spiritual realm is Jesus Christ because he is the son of the living God, the creator of all that is. He is life, he is love, and he is the word, and the word tells us that he is the rock on which we're built. And so when Jesus was speaking, he was speaking with authority, he spoke with wisdom, and, and these are the things he's, in previous to this wise man, foolish man, the therefore, these are some of the things that he was giving to us. Um, let's turn to uh, the chapter 7, starting with verse 1 this time. And I can't go into all of this because of time, but think about these things. Like These are the kinds of things that make your life solid. So first it is uh, in verse 1, do not judge, or you too will be judged. So we have to be really careful about that, uh, that we're, we're not standing in judgment over someone else. Uh, because you don't want to be judged at all for that. It says you will be judged uh, with the measure you use. It will be measured back to you. So that's the first That's the first kind of nugget for us to build on. Here's another one. Go down to verse number 6. It says do not give uh, dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. So it's kind of like be appropriate in who you speak to and what you say especially if it is the, the things of God, right? What is sacred? All right, let's hop down to verse number seven. This is uh, kind of like how your relationship could be with God. This is something you can stand on. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find and knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. So that's a great one, right? It's, it's talking about the nature of God. You seek after him, you knock, you, you keep knocking, and he will open the door and answer you. Huh. Then you talk, hopping down to verse 13, um, uh, this one is about the, the path that you should be walking. And here's what he says. Um, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Okay, so which are you going to be searching for? Are you going to go with the why thing? This is what everybody else is doing. Everybody else is doing that, so that's what I'm going to do. Are you going to look for that narrow gate? Are you going to look for that, oh, I'm going to have to go this alone because this is what's righteous, and God's called me to be righteous, so I'm going to seek that gate, and that's the only one that I'm after. You all go ahead. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going to try to get you to follow me, but you go ahead. Uh, I'm not going that way because it leads to destruction. I want to be one of the few, and I hope that you do too. Be one of the few that find the narrow gate. And do you know who the gate is? Jesus. Jesus is the gate. All right, so verse 15, this is another nugget. Um, and, and this has to do with watch out for being easily misled. It's about watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree can't bear bad fruit, right? So, and, and a bad tree can't bear good fruit. So, right, you know, don't be misled. Uh, the way people act tells you a lot about who they are and what they're doing on the inside. All right. So, and then, and then, then comes verse 24. He's he's given his conclusion. Therefore, if you do these words, if you do what I'm saying, if you live this way, not judging and 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 being careful, you know, handling the things of God properly, and and asking of God, and seeking after God, and, and searching for that narrow gate, and, and watching out for people who want to mislead you. Therefore, you do that, and you'll be like the wise man who built his house upon the rock. Hear that. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. 
So the words of Jesus, they are instructing us about his mind, the way he thought, the way that he operated in the world. If you're a follower of him, you need to be like him, to think like him, to behave like him. You cannot be double-minded. You can't be part of him and, and part of, uh, of yourself or the world. It, it, it's crazy making. It's crazy making. I, I know it's a process. We're being uh, sanctified, you know, this gradual being made into the likeness of Christ. But if we are seeking after God, we can accelerate this process and be more and more like Jesus. Instead of just receiving, receiving, if we're seeking it, then whatever is coming, we're, it's like right, driving through a rainstorm, right? You get more rain on you. Uh, seek the Lord God. Now, sand versus rock. If you look up the nouns, what is sand? What is it? It's rock. It used to be rock. Right? But over time of like impact and pressure, it just gets broken down, broken down, broken down, broken down. And uh, even it's gravel and then it's even finer, it becomes sand. And, and then you have beaches and, and deserts, right? Those are made of sand. By contrast then, a rock is a naturally occurring aggregate of solid mineral. So sand used to be rock, it was broken down. Um, the tiny particles don't stick together very good. So if you have chosen in your life any of those things that are not of Christ on which to build your life, then you have built on sand. You can, you can hold a rock, but you can't hold on to sand for very long. It shifts, and it really can't hold up anything for, rock, for very long. Now, a rock, on the other hand, is solid. Um, some rocks are more dense than others more compact and more strong, but I'll tell you the strongest rock in the entire universe is Jesus Christ. He is the thing that you can build on. Nothing can break him. Nothing's more powerful than him. Uh, nothing can chip him away or sift him. Um, you can't lift him, but he can support you. Um, he can support you, your family, your friends, your spouse, your, you know, the people that you love. He can, he can carry your concerns, your joys, your sorrows, and yes, your entire life. So be wise. Choose this day to build uh, on <laughs> everything that you ever will be uh, on the rock of salvation, which is Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to turn with me one more time. We're going to turn over to 1 Corinthians, which is actually the, where the um, verses for my talk really come from today. Um, 1 Corinthians 3, starting in verse 10. And this is more for, um, I, I know that some of you don't know Jesus, and, and I'm encouraging you to build your life on the rock, but some of you do have Jesus, and you have built your life on the rock, right? You, you, you've chosen that that's what's going to be your foundation, but I warn you that the, some of us are using building materials that are substandard, and that's what 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verse 10 is going to speak to us today. Um, so turn there with me. It says, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else has been building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring it to light, it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive a reward. If, what is, if it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the, frame, the flame. Now, do you remember the story of the three little pigs? Three little pigs, right? One built with uh, sticks, one, one built with straw, one built with sticks, and one built with bricks. And so they built their little houses, and then here comes the big bad wolf, right? And he's going to huff, I'm going to puff, I'm going to blow your house down. Well, with the first one, the piggy made of straw, it just blows his house down, right? Easy peasy. The enemy came in, just blew it down. Uh, and so uh, then, then he goes to the second one. And the, and the sticks, right? I'm going to huff, I'm going to puff, I'm going to blow your house down. And uh, blows them down. That, that little piggy, he didn't make a good choice. And then the third one, though, is brick. And the wolf huffs and puffs, and he cannot blow down the brick. Now, depending on which story you read, 
Um, uh, <laughs> some of the stories, the pig gets eaten by the wolf, and the other stories, he just the little pig runs to the next pig's house. Um, but I'll tell you what, in, in our spiritual, if we apply this, what is the, the thing about Jesus here is that we too have an enemy, but he wants to do more than huff and puff. He wants to absolutely kill and destroy you. He wants to destroy your life, your marriage, your children, your relationships, your life. He wants to utterly destroy you. In fact, he wants to do such a good job that he wants to take you straight to hell with him, uh, which is his destination. The word tells us that. And, and those who do not want to choose to be uh, with the God of all comfort, uh, they get to go be with uh, the father of lies. So um, what, are, what are your choices? Like, what are you using to build on this foundation of Jesus Christ? Now, gold and silver, they're very precious. They're considered to be of great value. Uh, a stone, uh, this uh, costly stones, that's something you have to put in a lot of effort uh, to gather. Now, wood and hay and straw, Pretty easy, not a big deal, right? They're cheap and you can get them. Um, it's not easy to burn gold with, with uh, fire, right? Or, or stones, but it is wood and it is hay and it is, um, you know, the straw. They're all very combustible. Now, so what is gold and silver? Gold and silver is when you align with the word of God, when you align with what God's doing in your life, when you listen to the Holy Spirit, those are the gold and the silver of your life. Now, costly stones are righteous choices that you make. Not easy, usually not, not easy at all, but they are the righteous choices. They are the ones that God makes uh, and wants you to make in addition to um, what's written in the Word. All right? So, um, I admit it. We all want what's the easiest, shortest path. We like that. We like comfort. Um, we want that downhill slope. And if you choose those things uh, that are cheap and easy, not difficult, the easy way out, then that's just like you're building on this solid rock foundation with something that really won't last. In fact, he's saying it's going to get burned up. There's going to be a fire where everything that you've done is going to be tested by a fire. That means every word, every thought. But he's saying you're not condemned by it. You're not going to lose your salvation by what you do. It's not salvation by works. It's salvation by faith that you believe in Jesus Christ, and yet you do want to build with things that are of great value and very costly. Okay, so uh, what is hay and wood and straw? It'd be things where you're gratifying uh, yourself. It's the opposite things of, do of God, drugs and alcohol and sexual immorality. I mean, the Bible gives you a really good list of what those things are. Um, your house is made of straw. In fact, verse 14 tells us that if what we build does survive, if it's tested by the fire and it does survive, then um, we get a reward. In, in modern terms, that would be it's worth it. Every sacrifice, every hardship that you went through is going to be totally worth it if you did it for the sake of Christ. So that's a good thing. But if you, if you build with cheap stuff, if you don't go all out for God, if you just keep part of your foot in the world, you, you do the cheap way, then even the heat of hell is probably going to scorch you as you barely sneak into heaven. I mean, really, uh, thank God for Jesus' blood. Thank God for the blood that covers your sins. All right, so the last, um, the last verse I want to read to you, um, this is from Romans 12.2. Um, it says this, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, with that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That's gold and silver and costly stones. What did Jesus build? His, Jesus built with pure gold. He didn't compromise. He didn't take the easy way, way out. He took actually the hardest route, a route harder than any of us will ever have to take. Let us be like him. Choose his ways today. Choose his ways over the ways of your flesh, and it will be worth it in the end, which is actually coming quite soon. Jesus is the rock. Be a good builder on that rock. So it's important what you build your life upon and then what materials you use to build it. You pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father,
Um, I just pray that these words will sink into our hearts. I feel, Lord God, this uh, urgency, a sense of that time is getting short, and uh, that you, Lord God, you, you, you are speaking truth through, through your word, and uh, only those who are truly receptive can, can hear it and can uh, actually let it change their life. Lord God, make every person that is hearing my voice right now choose to be wise. Choose to be wise. Listen to the words of Jesus and employ them in your life. So that nothing you do gets burned up. Nothing you do is for waste. Lord God, I just pray that. I just pray that in Jesus' name, that we start stepping up and getting serious about what you're doing. What you're doing, not only in the world or in our town or our country, but serious about what you're doing in our own heart, Lord God. And uh, burn away that chap. Burn away anything that we've built. Shake it, Lord God. So that only what's solid on the foundation of Jesus Christ remains. Because I'll tell you what, nothing else is going to get us through these times. It's not going to get better, Lord God. I know it. Your word says it. I mean, this is no surprise. But, Father, we are seeking after you with our whole heart. We love you with, with everything that we have, and we're seeking after you. We're knocking. We're asking. Those of us who are really pursuing you, Lord God, just pour your Holy Spirit down upon us, Father. And help us to make a difference. Help us to be a good example to others uh, about what your word is really trying to communicate. So I love you, Lord God. Give a blessing to every person uh, that's watching this video right now, Lord God. And um, bring us back together as soon as you can. I love you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua Mashiach, the one and only Savior of the world, Savior of our hearts. Amen.